Hey, I'm Becca with the Happy Ever Crafter, and in this week's tutorial, I'm showing you step by step how to draw some really simple peonies like this. And then once we've gone through that, I show you how to apply them to decorating shoes like this. Let's jump right in. Okay, so first things first, obviously I need to show you how to draw the flower that we're going to repeat over and over on the shoe. And so I like to use basically the same flower when I'm doing shoes like this because I find it makes the whole shoe look a little bit more cohesive. And it's also, frankly, a little bit easier if you're a beginner and you're not necessarily that great at doodling flowers. If you can just learn how to do one and then repeat it over the shoes, it ends up actually looking really great. And by nature, every time you draw it, it's gonna look a little bit different anyway. So you're never gonna have the exact same flower over and over again. But I'm gonna show you the basic shape that we're gonna use. And you can copy along as I do each piece. It's just a really basic flower. And then we'll do it on the shoes. Step one is to kind of draw the middle of the flower. So we're gonna draw a peony as if it's starting to bloom. So the middle part's still gonna be like that little tight circle you see sometimes in the flowers. So just draw sort of this shape really simple you just want it to be sort of like a bean shape really uneven here at the top then you're going to come from the bottom and bring it around and again uneven as you come into the middle and same thing on the other side doesn't have to be symmetrical in fact you don't want it to be perfectly symmetrical and then you're going to close it off at the top and it's as if that petal is sort of folding into the middle here so this is the middle of your flower. You can add a couple more folds in there if you want to. And that's where all the petals are starting to bloom out from. So now we're gonna draw this piece at the bottom, which is gonna be a petal sort of folding out. Again, doesn't have to be the exact same shape as mine. You just essentially want like a bigger, wider petal down here. And then from the top, you're gonna start adding some flatter sort of more jagged petals with these little notches in them and again don't overthink this the more basic and organic it looks the better and you also want to try and remember not to make it perfectly round i know it's really hard because your brain naturally wants to do that And then I'm gonna take these two last ones and I'm gonna add just like a little, a fold to them. So now these look like they're folding in towards the, the flower here. You know how peonies sort of have those edges sometimes. So I think I'm happy with this. And again, every time you draw it, it's gonna look a little bit different. So I don't necessarily love how this petal looks and some of the other spots aren't my favorite, but you're just gonna keep drawing it over and over and over again. And it's always gonna look a little bit different. So when I put this on shoes, I'll draw one kind of facing this direction and then I'll do another one facing the other direction and different sizes and stuff like that. So I'll do a couple more examples on this paper just to get warmed up and then we'll take it onto the shoes. So I just wanna encourage you to keep playing with this. You can fill a whole sheet if you want to, and I want you to not overthink it. So as you're working on these, you might draw a petal that you really don't like, and you might be tempted to just scrap the whole thing. But I promise you, as you build up on this, and as you add more and more flowers, the more unnatural they look to your eye, the more natural they're gonna look as a whole. So just keep going, fill up that page, and get kind of comfortable with the shape of this flower, and then we're gonna move on to adding it to shoes. Okay, so I'm gonna take this onto the shoes now. And these are just some Toms, white Toms that the client brought to me. She's gonna be wearing them for her wedding. And so um, I will be using just a normal Sharpie pen. And there are pens that you can use on fabric. You can go to the craft store and you can find lots of fabric pens um, that might work a little bit better on this type of surface. It depends 
what the shoe is made of. There are some that work really well with this. There are some that I actually use Sharpie paint pens on or acrylic paint pens. It really depends what the nature of your project is. For these shoes in particular, I know that the bride is planning to just wear them for the one night and kind of ruin them um, in her outdoor wedding. And so it's not a big deal. And I've discussed with her that this will probably only last for her one night if she's going to get them wet or dirty or anything like that. She can't really wash them. Um, but it's important to discuss that with your client. So make sure you know what the best pen is to use. Um, but generally when you're doing shoes like this, I like to let the client know that they're not going to be permanent forever. They're not like printed on or anything like that. They're definitely a handmade product. And so it's good to let them know that. So again, I'm just going to use my normal Sharpie marker. And if you're feeling really uncomfortable, this is a lot of pressure to just like jump onto a shoe and do it because you can't really erase it after. You can do it in pencil first. Um, it's up to you. I feel really comfortable with drawing those flowers. And so I'm just going to jump right onto the shoes. But again, you could do it in pencil if you feel like you need to first. And um, yeah, so I'm just going to take my Sharpie and jump right on. The one thing you want to look at before you get started is where the seams are on the shoes, just so you can understand um, kind of how to work around them. And I just basically start, I don't like to start right in the center because I find that looks a little bit too forced. I'll start over to the side a little bit with one of my flowers. And then I gradually just keep adding more and more and more in different shapes and different sizes like we discussed in the sketching portion. So I'm just going to move one of these shoes out of the way and turn it over. And I'm gonna get started again off to the side here a little bit with my first flower. Now, as you see here, I'm starting to get to the seam. And so I just generally go carefully and work around it as if it's not there. You could plan a design where the seam is sort of incorporated or it looks like you're doing it on purpose. It really depends what you're trying to do. So I just work around it and I kind of look at it on different angles and see and make sure that I've filled in the lines. So again, as you're doing this, try not to overthink it. Just keep adding the petals. Don't worry too much about whether or not it looks absolutely perfect on these shoes right away. Again, the more you add, the happier you're gonna end up with it. All right, so there's my first flower. Again, I'm not gonna make it too, too perfect at this point. I might just add actually one more petal up here so it doesn't look quite so perfectly squared off at the top. And then I'm just going to keep moving and adding more flowers. So I'm going to move kind of over to this side and I'm going to do one facing a different direction. You can have them overlapping a little bit if you want. You can have them really tight or you can spread them out because once I'm done drawing all of my flowers, I'm also going to add in some leaves. And so those will be what fill in your space. So don't worry too much about having them like really, really packed in tight because I'll show you a way to fill in the spaces afterwards. So I'm just going to jump in and keep filling up this shoe. All right, so I've got my main flowers all laid out. And one thing I like to do on shoes like this is actually just kind of have them start to fade out as they come towards the inside of the shoe. I find like when people have them on their feet and they're touching together, it looks really nice that like this part is a little bit more calm because there's so much going on all in the middle of the shoe. And so I actually just start to like fade it out as it gets in towards the middle. So that's something you're welcome to do as well. But um, what I'm gonna do now is start adding some leaves to fill in these blank spaces. So I like to look at where there's blank spaces. So here, for example, and I add just a really simple line and leaf. And so what I would do is just take one line and add a nice leaf coming out. And then from that same line, one going in sort of the other direction. And of course here it's running over the edge, so I stop it right as it comes towards the edge here. 
and you're just going to keep doing that kind of everywhere that there are little blanks and again you want to make sure that you're just kind of like letting it naturally run off the edge you don't want to have everything perfectly fitting into the shoe or it's going to look a little bit forced so i'll just draw some here and you're just going to keep adding those all over the shoe And then once I've filled in the leaves, basically all I'm gonna do is go through and see if there are any weird blank spots that look awkward. So if there are, for example, what I saw up here is that there's not really anything in this one little spot. And so if you were looking straight down at the shoe, this would look kind of blank, um, is you can add some more petals. So on this flower right here, I'm just gonna add a petal that kind of overlaps. And you can just keep adding a few more to fill in any of the blank spaces. So having things overlap is totally fine. And then here again, I notice a spot that looks a little blank, but I'm just gonna add a little leaf as if it's coming in from the top. So just go through and see if there's any awkward blank spots. And then other than that, um, oh, you also wanna look at the edge where you see it starting to run over and see if it looks sort of like, you don't want it to look perfectly like it's ending in a perfect straight line anywhere. You want it to have like some leaves overlapping and some petals overlapping that just kind of look like they're naturally petering off there around the edges. So I'm pretty happy with this shoe. The last thing I wanna do is just add a little bit of contrast. So I'm gonna go into the middle of each flower and color it in a little bit darker so that it looks like the inside of each flower really is popping and it gives it a little, a little bit more contrast in the shoe. Some of the flowers like this one I'm filling in right now doesn't really have much of a center. So I'm just gonna kind of make one so that it looks like there's a little more contrast. All right, so now I think you can see how much more that makes it pop. It makes the flowers sort of stand out from the leaves a little bit more. And if you wanted, you could even add a little bit more detail, like some shadow lines in these flowers or some shadow lines on the petals. I really like the look of just these simple line drawings, especially on white shoes. So I'm gonna leave it plain, but if you wanted to, you could definitely do that. So I'm totally happy with the way that this shoe looks now. And basically all I'm gonna do is do the exact same thing on the second shoe. So what you wanna keep in mind as you're doing this one is obviously you're not gonna get an exact match on the other shoe, it's just not gonna happen, which is fine because you want it to look natural like it would in nature. But what you wanna keep in mind is as we did on the first shoe where this is starting to run into the middle, you sort of want that area to be approximately the same amount of flowers starting to go away as they move towards the center so that when you look at it from the top down, it looks natural um, all in that area. So basically just grab your other shoe and do the exact same thing. Alrighty, so I've got both shoes done now. I look at them from the top and I try and see if they look about right if you were to be looking down at them. And I like the way they look. So um, if you look at the insides, you can see like I had them end around the same spot and they started to kind of fade out around the same spot on both shoes. I've filled in all the center parts black and I've made sure there's no real huge gaps that are bothering me and they are all finished. The last thing I'm gonna do is spray them so that they're a little bit more permanent. Like I said, they're not gonna ever be totally permanent and they probably will start to fade and bleed a little bit if they get wet, but you can do a little bit of prevention on that with some spray. So what I like to use is actually just like any of that shoe spray that you can get at your average shoe store. You know when you buy new shoes and they try and upsell you on this special spray. Um, so this is really good for that. And this is just like one that I found at my local shoe store, but you can get whatever one you want. Waterproof, stain proof, protects, whatever. They all kind of do the same thing. And so I strongly recommend doing this outside, but I am gonna do it a little bit on video just to give you an idea. 
So obviously read the instructions on your can. This one says that everything has to be clean and dry and that you should hold the can about six inches from your shoe. So I'm gonna do that and show you. Okay, so it doesn't really show much, but it should be adding a layer of extra protection on these shoes. And again, just read the can, read the instructions, and make sure that you're using it on a material that is actually listed on the can. But after you spray them, you are pretty much done. So hopefully that video was helpful and you're inspired to start doodling on your own shoes. If you do, I would love to see it. You can tag me on Instagram at the happy ever crafter. And if you liked this video and you want to see more tutorials, make sure you hit subscribe because I do a tutorial every single week, always on different topics, but I think you would like them. So I'll see you next time.